Believe it or not, Lilith is back. It's not a misprint. <laughs> we got a teaser earlier about the scratch quicksort algorithm, and now we're gonna get to find out what it is. So, cool. <laughs> Lovely, okay, so scratch quicksort. It's like a variation on quicksort. Uh, it's often, even usually, faster than quicksort, and it's stable, and it's comparison based, so it just like works for everything. It's not like a special case thing. And it requires scratch space. So uh, yeah, that's a, that's a drawback. But I think it's worth it. Um, so quicksort is a pretty cool algorithm. Uh, pretty quick, it sorts things. So if this is your input, oh, it's a uh, divide and conquer. So it like partitions the input into the things below. It picks a pivot, say, four, uh, just like picks a random element, or I don't know. I don't know how it picks it, I, I do know. But let's say it picks four. Uh, then it partitions all the things below four to the left and above four to the right. Uh, and the way quicksort does this is by looking at the first, oh, first switching the pivot to the beginning to get it out of the way. And then looking at the first element and seeing if it's below the pivot, it is. And the last element, or it's a, nine is above the pivot and two is below the pivot, so they should be swapped. Two should go at the beginning, nine should go at the end. So we swap those, I grade them out because we're not gonna touch them again. Uh, and then it'll again look at seven, okay, that should go above the pivot. Five should also go above the pivot. It's currently at the high end, and so we're gonna leave it there. And move on to look at six, still above the pivot, eight above the pivot, one below the pivot, now swap these. And then when you're done, you swap the pivot back to the middle. And that's quicksort, been around forever. Uh, scratch quicksort is very similar. Uh, we still pick a pivot. Uh, however, this next pass, I think is conceptually simpler. And I think that compilers and hardware think it's simpler too, because it's faster. Uh, so you look at eight and you say eight is above the pivot. And then you look at nine, you say nine is above the pivot, seven is above the pivot, three is below, one is below, six is above, five is above, two is below. It's like you just, you look at each one and if it's above the pivot, you put it at the top, and if it's below the pivot, you put it at the bottom. Very straightforward, the pivot ends up in the middle. Uh, so yeah, let's talk about stability. Stability mean, in sorting means that two things that are compare equivalently uh, aren't reordered. Quick sort is unstable and it's pretty tricky to make it stable, uh, but scratch quick sort does make it stable. So to have a notion of stability, you need things that compare equivalently but are distinguishable. So here we have a bunch of eights that are distinguishable, but they're all, nine, none of them are less than each other. Uh, these are definitely all fair use, no copyright images, I think. I, I actually tried to make sure that was the case. I hope I succeeded. Anyway, uh, so same algorithm as before. Select the pivot uh, and then place the things that are above the pivot above and below the pivot below. And, oh, sorry, let's take a look at this four. This four is below the pivot because on, there's a feedback, whatever. Anyway, uh, because we break ties here based on the index. Uh, what we really do is when we're iterating over the first half, uh, we check if something is, we check if the pivot is less than uh, the thing we're comparing. And in this case, it's not less than, so we put the thing we're comparing at the beginning. And then, we skip over the pivot, and then for the next one, this next four, we compare is the pivot, uh, or is the thing less than the pivot? I don't know, I'm getting these things backwards. Uh, the gist of it is that we break ties with the index, but we don't have an extra comparison because we're breaking ties the same way a bunch of times in a row, so we just uh, have a quick loop and then a different quick loop for the second half. So let's look at, is this a stable sorting algorithm? Is this a stable partition? If we look over on this side, uh, yes, it is stable over here uh, because how we got those three things uh, 
is we scammed over the input and looked for the first things, looked at all the things that are less than four in order and just plopped them in. So that's stable. Nothing got swapped. Now, if we look at this side, no, very much not stable. Uh, everything got swapped. Everything? Yes, everything. It, we started at the beginning and the first thing went to the end. The second thing went to second to the end. Third thing went from the third to the end. So they all swapped. Fortunately, we didn't lose any information. When everything swaps, you still preserve all the information of what the input order was. And so we can just use recursive, we can do this recursively and just keep track. Are the things in the correct order or are they in the wrong order? And we never get into a, they're all mixed up state. And for that reason, we can do a very efficient post-processing that just like flips half the stuff at the end. And the, the runtime of making it stable at the end is very little. So that's, that's how it becomes stable. Performance, uh, here's some little benchmarks that I ran. Uh, these are caveat, very small domain. There's a lot of different benchmarks you can run for sorting. I'm just pointing at a couple. Uh, this is not a representative sample. But the gist of it is scratch quicksort is much faster than quicksort in this case. Uh, I'd note here, oh, four minutes, lovely. Uh, this is kind of a silly benchmark though because if you just sort using radix sort, which is the default in this input, it's so much faster. So let's look at a different use case. Uh, now I'm sorting with the by keyword set. So we're sorting these by their absolute value, which means we can't use radix sort because we haven't made radix sort work for that and probably never will. Anyway, another silly thing is that I'm showing these results in a REPL instead of a table. So this is better. Uh, looking at, oh, also merge sort is also relevant. If you want a stable sort, quick sort isn't going to work. So maybe we should be comparing this to merge sort instead of quick sort because they're both stable. Anyway, if you compare to quick sort, it's great. If you compare to merge sort, it's even greater. Uh, there are some cases where it's slower than quick sort. There are some cases where it's like a tiny bit slower than merge sort, but those are hard to come by. Uh, allocating unnecessarily, huge red flag. Don't do it, bad performance. Allocating necessarily can actually be fine performance, I think. Although there's some domains that really don't want allocation. Uh, and yeah, sorry to those domains. Tricky, I guess. Um, limitations, it allocates not always faster. Uh, I'd like to thank Peter Michael Sarah, and Nicole Eichenmeyer for funding, uh, and lots of folks helped review this. So, yeah. Thank you. Questions? All right, we have time for a question, too. Yes. Oh, I have another question. I just asked you my question. Yes. <laughs> Prediction and every some system or whatever, like knowing that scanning very nicely costs us a like branch prediction or which like kind of thing is this? Now the question is, where do you think the performance comes from? Yeah, so in theory you could use fancy instrumentation to find out. I can guess that in this normal quick sort, the comparison order. First we're comparing this nine with the four, and then we're comparing the two with the four, and then we swap them, and then we compare the seven with the four, and then we compare the five with the four, and then what's the next comparison here? It's the six. And then the next comparison is an eight. Like, the order of what we're comparing depends on the previous comparisons. That feels like it's bad for prefetching. Uh, yeah, whereas with scratch quicksort, we're first gonna compare the eight with the four, then the nine with the four, then the seven with the four, and like, room, and it's, so the, maybe it's that? I don't know is the answer. <laughs> All right, thanks. Thank you. Thank you.